Not the fish I'm looking for. Nice largemouth bass on Nightcrawler. It's kind of funny, I'm actually going for Shellcracker. If you've been following me on Instagram, you will see some very large Shellcracker that my dad has been catching. And it was at this spot and another spot. And I'm trying to replicate that because I think they're trophy size. Shellcracker trophy is only 11 inches. This guy's almost 13 inches. But it's a bass. So I'm going to let him go and uh, try again. Surprise catch. There he goes. This is just a real simple rig. Weighted bobber and a circle hook. I probably need a smaller circle hook. These two ducks like to hang around this spot too. Hey guys, what are you up to? Just quacking around? Fishing is usually slow here, which uh, goes to show I only caught that bass and now I'm not getting any bites. So I'm gonna move to another spot. All right, spot number two. Shellcracker, or in other words, this is a red deer sunfish. I think they're spawning in this cove. This guy's only nine inches, so it needs to be all the way here to 11 inches to be a trophy. And I've seen him bigger in here. At least I think I've seen them bigger. Look at the coloration of this guy. And let him go. Let's see if I can catch another one. Ah, uh, bait stealers. I think I'm going to switch this back to a bottom rig. This is one of those days that I should have brought the kayak. Although all these spots are easily accessible from shore. I know this sounds like an infomercial for rig wrap easy sinker slides. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. However, these things are just, they're just so cool. You know, I don't have to cut my line, I just put it on there and go. It's on there. Now I got a bottom rig. Where's my worms? Now to cast this to where my parents were catching those giant shell crackers.
That was just a waiting game. And I'm tripping over everything. That was a reverse bite. Ow. I wonder if this is a turtle. I oh, went into the weeds. Another one. This one might be a hybrid. Doesn't have any uh, red flare to him. I'll let him go. This guy's a little bit short. This would make one heck of a flathead bait. I think I can reuse the worm. I was hoping to get a giant one here, but I might not. It's okay, it's still good catching some nice fish. Some types of fish that I normally don't chase. And now I get a knotted mess. I'm literally casting all the line off of this reel. I need to reline it. fish jumping around here. Now what I meant by reverse bite on that previous fish catch, the fish basically picked up the bait and swam towards the reel, causing the line to go slack. That's something that kind of rarely happens. Most of the time they feel the pressure of the line or the hook or whatever, and they take off the other way, which causes the rod to bend, obviously. I'm really hoping the trophy one grabs it. <laughs> Bait stealers. They got me again. I had that out there a good 15 minutes. I bet it didn't have bait on it the entire time. Well, I've had it out for a while and not getting any bites. I know one thing for sure though, I've been seeing gar come in and out of here. That may have shut down the whole area. I had a friend one time tell me that if the gar are running in an area, it shuts down all the other fish because they don't want to get tangled in with the gar. But I'd like to ask you guys, what do you think? Is that actually true? If you saw my bass fishing video, there were gar in the area, but we were catching bass too. But this is another try for another trophy fish for the Tennessee Angler Recognition Program. And I didn't catch one. That's okay, I'll keep trying. There's plenty of other fish I can try for on the Angler Recognition Program. And I got friends who swear up and down they know good spots for several different fish. If I can ever get to those spots. If you're local to East Tennessee and you know a good spot for a trophy fish, like smallmouth or anything else, leave a comment below as well. As always, thanks for watching and give me a thumbs up if you like this video.